Hello and welcome. We're going to be starting a new series this week where we look through the book of Colossians. Now, we don't have time in these short videos to go through every single verse in the, in the book. So what we're going to do is each week we're going to look at one chapter and one short passage in each chapter. This week we're going to start with chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. And there we read, And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, Yet he has now reconciled you in his flesh through death in order to present to you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach, if indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. Here Paul gives us in a very, very, just in three verses, the gospel and the blessings that we have in the gospel. You know, the gospel means good news. And unless we realize where we were, or perhaps where we are if we haven't obeyed the gospel, the good news makes no sense at all. And this is what he's saying. Before we become Christians, before we have our sins forgiven, we were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds. Now this is just what we read in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, where it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We alienated from God, and we are engaged in sin. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul goes to quite some detail to explain our situation there. Notice Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 3. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging in desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. You see, this is the situation before we are saved, before we have our sins forgiven. We go on down to verse 11, uh, it's still Ephesians 2. Therefore remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, verse 12, Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So what Paul is doing in our, our Colossians passage is he's pointing out that this was the position that we were in. We were alienated from God, we were hostile in mind, and we were engaged in evil deeds. We were engaged in sin. This means that we were lost. This is what it's talking about. And that's what we read in, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. And we need to remember that. We're talking about eternal life, an eternal death here. Our next, our next verse, Colossians 1.22. Yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless beyond reproach. Now, notice what we read in Romans 3.23. We didn't, we didn't finish the entire passage there, but it says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. We have this eternal life because, as we read in Colossians 1.22, he has now reconciled us in his fleshly body through death. Reconciliation, or to be reconciled, means a change of relationship. And in this case, a change of relationship between God and us. We were dead in our sins and our trespasses, but we were reconciled to God by the death of Jesus Christ. 
So as we read in, uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 uh, and starting in verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away, behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and has committed us to the word of reconciliation. The way this reconciliation worked was the forgiveness of sin. We know that the wages of sin is death. Now this is why Jesus had to come in the flesh because a death had to take place. Let's now go back to Romans chapter 6 and this time we're going to start in verse 3. Romans chapter 6 verse 3. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Jesus died on the cross. What did Jesus die on the cross for? He died for the forgiveness of our sins. How do we gain that forgiveness of sins? Well, it's through baptism. That's what we read here. Verse 3 and 4. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. That's what we read over in Colossians 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. That's how we're reconciled. Christ died on the cross and he gave us the gospel. In Mark 16, 16, he said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Now, back to our text, verse 23. If indeed you continue in the faith, firmly established and steadfast, and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. Now, we're going to pay attention to this. We have been reconciled in the fleshly body of Jesus Christ through his death, in order that he will present us holy and blameless beyond reproach if we continue in the faith. You see, we have to continue in the faith. We have to be faithful. It, Jesus said, as recorded in Revelation 2 verse 10, Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Now God doesn't expect his people to be perfect. He knows that we stumble and fall, but he expects us to pick ourselves up and walk faithfully. He doesn't expect us to be perfect, but he does expect us to be faithful. Well, thank you so much once again. Why don't, if you enjoy these videos, why don't you subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you once again, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.